and I did I did eight six C past seven, leave St. Mary's College, went to St. Diego Six Farm, and I leave St. Diego Six Farm and I went to UTEC in two thousand and in 2006, and then I leave UTEC in 2010. They said I did fairly well, and so I, I earn a degree in, in finance and marketing. No, that's not the essence of the story. The essence of the story is that some of you right now, you are where I am. I'm probably worse than where I am because my house was so deplorable. They used to call me Rosie Lego Beast. Even when I go to Bagua, no, they still call me Rosie, Rosie Boy. So this is when you are looking at now, you are looking at somebody who have been through to poverty. I used to be on parts. I used to be on food stamp. I know it's what it's like. I couldn't even walk on the top of my roof. In 2005, when Hurricane Ivan came, the top of my roof was, was blown off. I, I, I make sure that nobody at my school knew, we, um, knew, knew where I live because that house was so deplorable. And they say, you know what? Those kids... From um from because my grandparents they named Tingling and they said those those people in that chicken coop house they will never amount to anything and so society have written me up they used to say my mother is mad but my mother wasn't mad is that my mother she used to, she didn't have enough money to buy clothes for herself so my mother used to wear some clothes just like us because we used to wear and me down and they said you guys you are mad. Even my grandmother by my father's side, she said to me one day, I'm not sure if you are all right. We are not sure that you are all right. In other words, my, my grandmother was saying that, you know what, you are probably a jack kid. We are not sure if you are, if you are all right. But I'm here to tell somebody today that you are not a biological mistake, that the sperms didn't slip. Let me say that again. I'm here to tell you today that you are not a biological mistake and that the sperms didn't slip. Scientists claim that when a male ejaculates into, into a female, that over at 600 million sperms dash towards that egg, and guess who made it? You and you and you sitting down here. That means that mean, that mean someone must have been in the highest heaven who picks you out of 600 million sperms. And he picked you out for this specific era. He picked you out for this specific time. And he picked you out. He chose your parents. That before that even means that before your mother and father was, was even created, God knew you because he said, before I found V in thy mother's womb, I knew you. So guess what? God created you. And then he backs up and he starts. The, the, the mere fact that you are here is that your future is already secure. But why? Because everything that God start is already finished. Let me repeat that. Everything that God start, he already finished. And the mere fact that you are here is that your future is already finished. But guess what? Your future is predestined. Well, guess what? Your future is also a, a choice. Watch this. If, if I predestine my daughter, so select my five-year-old daughter, and I say, you know what? From now on, I'm going to save her, her school fee for her to do medicine in the next 10 or 20 years. Because next 10 or 20 years, she'll probably be um, 25 or the next 18 years when she's 23. And I say, you know what? I'm going to save up enough money for my daughter to be a medical doctor. No, what have I done is that I have predestined my daughter future. Watch this. But the money is there for her to go to med school. But I can't. My, my duty, I can't get her to go to med school. Why? Because it's my daughter's decision that will, either, that will either take her to the predestined future that I created for her. Her destiny can either take her to that future or take her away from that future. And that is exactly what is happening to some of you right now. God has a great future for you. But until you have developed the skill, until you have developed the mindset, and the willpower to know that purpose. And so you can go directly into, into, that, into that future. You will never get to that predestined. So you have to choose your decision. You have to choose your habit to get to that future that God has for you. God has finished everything that he has started on earth. Good Friday is nothing new. When we celebrate Good Friday, we are celebrating the past of God. Watch this. 
when Jesus came to earth, Jesus was already dead. It is in the Bible. He said, before the foundation of the earth, the lamb was already slain. That means before Jesus born, he was already dead. So when Jesus born, Jesus was already dead. Jesus um, saved us from sin before God even created mankind. Because the Bible tells us that before the foundation of the earth, the lamb was already slain. That means Good Friday was Jesus, was God passed. Crucifixion was God passed. Before Adam and Eve even sinned, God saved us from sin. And it is the same thing for you. Before you were born, before you were farming in thy mother's womb, your future has already set. Your future has already decided. But it is your will that will take you to that future. And despite the circumstance that you are going through now, I used to believe that I was a biological mistake. They say rose a leg of beast. You will never amount to anything. They say rose a leg of beast. We should pack you in a barrel and roll it away. They say those kids from out the chicken food that live on parts. You will never amount to nothing. They say rose a leg of beast. You, I know you. You will never ever amount to anything in life. And so today I'm going to talk to some of you to make your decision. So get your pen and paper. We are going to speak, we are going to talk on about seven things that will take you to the end that God wants for you so that you can make a major impact in life. So that when you take your last breath, the annals of history will have you in it. We want you, when you take your last breath, God will say, welcome my faithful servant. God called a servant and faithful. He called him worthless because he told us about the parable. And he said, one of them, they, he eyed his talent. He said, master, I was fearful. And he said, I, I hid my talent. And God said, take it from him and give it to the one who have more. The first time I read that parable, I was so upset with God. I was so upset with God. Because why would God take the one with nothing and gives it to the one who have more. And in that process, Jesus was telling, me, telling us the famous um, phrase uh, added that, that the rich is becoming richer. It is true because God said, even what you don't use will be taken away from you and give it to those who have more. He said that. So in order for you to get more, you have to manage what you have. You have to manage your time. You have to manage your resource. And you have to get to that predestining. So, so let us go into the teaching. That was just a free, free quote. I just, let me just start now. <laughs> so, so, so the first thing we're going to talk about, as, as Anthony wants me to speak about, is focus. So the first thing you're going to write down is mindset. So now write down mindset. Now, when Jesus start his ministry. The first thing that Jesus attacked wasn't demon. The first thing that Jesus attacked, it wasn't demon. The first thing that Jesus attacked was people mindset. It was people mindset. Because it is easier to cast out a demon from out of somebody than it is to change your mind. And Jesus said, repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is here. No. Write down the word repent. The word repent simply means it's a Greek word. And it simply means it to change one mindset. That's what the word repent means. It simply means to change one mindset. No, if your mindset is changed, that means your philosophy will change. And it also means that your behavior will also change. So, so God said, so Jesus said, he said, you must change your mindset. No, Solomon said something powerful. Solomon said something powerful. He said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let me repeat that. Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The word heart is not in your chest. Am I right? Let me say that again. Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The word, the word heart is not in your chest. The word heart in that context is from the Hebrew word 
from the Greek word, it simply means your subconscious mind. So Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his subconscious mind, so is he. You are exactly your thought. You are exactly your thought. And let me let me say this now. You probably can write it down, you can tweet it, you can quote it, that you will never live beyond your belief system. Write that down. You will never live beyond your belief system. A matter of fact, you can also write this down. You can also tweet it. Is that your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. Let me say it again. Your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. That is why when somebody baptized, watch this, when somebody is baptized, when somebody is baptized, immediately when you are baptized, your soul is saved. Watch this. Your soul is saved. Your spirit, but not your mind. That is why Paul said, be ye transformed, not by baptism, be ye transformed, not by, not by praying. But he said, be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. No, if your mind renewed, you are a new person. If your mind renew, you are a new person. That is why in our forefather days, they would uh, they will not allow slave to learn to read. Why? Because if slave, if they if slave could read, they know that once a slave begins to read and unshackle their mind, the slave will be set free. Let me repeat that. The reason why they never allow a slave to read because if they know a slave could read, that means they could not locked up that slave anymore because once you are free in your mind you are automatically free that is why paul said be ye transformed by the what the renewing of your mind that means you can be baptized and you have the same mindset and if you have the same mindset you will never change you your feet will never take you where your mind has never been and you will never live beyond your thought. That is why when Jesus started his ministry, he said, repent. He said, change your mind and go back to the original status. Let me write, the, let me just show this scene and you can write this down. I want you to write down three things. The first one is knowledge. The first one is knowledge. There's three things. The first one is knowledge. Knowledge simply means information. Knowledge is information. The second one, knowledge is information. Watch this. The Bible says, lack of knowledge, thy people perish. Lack of knowledge, thy people perish. But watch this. The Bible never said that knowledge set us free. The Bible never said that knowledge set us free. Lack of knowledge, thy people perish. You need knowledge because anywhere in your life that you, are, that you have the least knowledge about, you are failing right now. Anywhere in your life that you are the least knowledgeable about, you are failing right now. You are failing. So it's the lack of knowledge. Hosea said, lack of knowledge. My, my people perish. Watch this. But he never said knowledge set us free. Do you know why? You can write this down. And you can tweet it as well. Write this down. Write this down. You can learn the wrong thing well and become an expert in error. Let me say that slowly. You can learn the wrong thing well and become an expert in error. That is why Jesus never said knowledge set us free. He said, you shall know the truth and it shall set you free. That means no one can set you free for truth. He said, you shall know the truth about you, and it shall set you free. That is why when a slave begins to read, when a slave begins to read, the slave master couldn't keep slavery for long when a slave begins to read, because he knows the truth. They know that they, they, they shouldn't be a slave. The truth is setting them free. And so you need understanding. You need understanding. Understanding 
is comprehension of the, of the information. So you, you, you can have knowledge, you can have knowledge about something, but you can't apply it. For example, let me put this for, for some of you who have done algebra in high school or sets. You have knowledge about sets, but you, but you don't understand it enough for you to apply it in life. So you need understanding. And the last thing is that you need wisdom. Wisdom is application. Wisdom is application. So you need those three to change your mindset. We are talking about focus. So the second point that now you need to be specific about your goals in life. The first one, we, we, we speak about your mindset. That is what we just finished up. The second point, you need to be specific about your goals in life. And even when you are praying, you need to be specific about what you are praying for. When Jesus came to the blind man, when Jesus came to the blind man, they cried out to Jesus. And Jesus said, they said to Jesus said, what can I do for you? And they said, I want to see it. I was saying to myself, isn't that a foolish question? A blind person cries out to you. Isn't that the blind person must want to see? But Jesus asked them, Jesus said, what do you want? They cry out and they said, son of David. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do? And they say, I want to see. So when you pray, you must be specific about what you are praying for. You must be specific about where you are going. And you must have a plan. In the heart, a man make his plan, but it's the Lord God that directs his footsteps. Now, if you are, if, if, if you take up your GPS, watch this, if you take up your GPS, right? And say, and say, and don't give the GPS. A, a, a location, can the GPS direct you? No, the GPS cannot direct you without a destination in mind. So if I'm in, if I'm in Kingston now and I say, I want to get to Ochi, I would have to plug in Ochi in the GPS and the GPS would direct my step on the way to, to Ochi. No, when I'm off track, the GPS will, will, will um, reroute me to put me back on track. That is what God is. God is a master GPS. <clears throat> and he said, he said, make your plan. And when you make your plan, you must submit it to God. You must submit it to God. And, and when God see your plan, if it is out of God's will, God will re reroute you back on track. But without a plan, God cannot direct you. The planning is for you. Not for God. There are some things, there are some things that God will never do for you. And planning is one of them. He has put the desire in your heart for you to plan, for you to be specific about what is it that you want in life. Without goals, my friend, you will never, you will never reach anywhere. You will be the same place forever. You must have some goals that you are targeting. You are not just here to, to, to play church. God, Jesus came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly, that you can impact the kingdom, that you can have good success. And that is why he put laws and, and things in place for you to follow them so that you may have good success. And one of them is goals. You must have written goals. So that the goals can give you focus. The goals can give you direction. Wherever your mind, wherever your mind is, that's where you are going. Wherever your mind is, that's where you are going. That is why when they are teaching um, NASCAR driver, are teaching somebody to ride a bike, they say, wherever you, you turn your head, that's where you are going to steer the bike in. And they say, if you are losing control of the bike, Position your head where you want to go and you will automatically steer yourself there. That is what goals do for you. You must be specific 
uphold it. The second one. To be a learner. You must have mentor in life. Write that down. Write that down. You must have some mentors in life. Mentorship is a shortcut to success. Mentorship is a shortcut to success. Every single great, every great individual have mentors. Paul mentor Timothy. Elijah and Elijah. David and Saul. Every great individual have some mentor. You must develop the habit to learn. You must feed your mind. To renew your mind, you must be constantly learning. The, minds that, the, minds, the mind that never learned anything new, your mind will, stag be, be, will become stagnant. And over time, stagnant water attracts bacteria. So you, you must be a, 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 a learner. I think, I think Paul said to, to Timothy, um, he said, I think what he said, he said, learn to show your to, 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 to show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. You must, you must become a learner. You must, you must value knowledge. Solomon said, buy knowledge, but sell it not. If you are going to be successful in life, if you are going to be great, if you are going to do well in life, you must have a mentor, somebody who you can model. And not just one mentor, but you need a mentor in different areas of your life. Probably you have a spiritual mentor at church, but now you need somebody who can, who can mentor you in, in your career, in your finance, in your marriage, wherever. You are, you are failing because each and, each and every one of us, there's so many right in our life that we are not doing well. So you need mentor in that area of life so that your life can fire and full cylinder. We don't want to just to be succeeding at church, but not in life. Because sometimes we are good at church, but not in life. And what God wants you to, to, to be successful so that you can influence the world and win soul for his kingdom. Because the truth is, if you are not successful, that this is why God wants you to be successful. Listen to me well. God wants you to have good success so that you can influence the world. People don't listen to failures. Let me say it again. People don't listen to failure. When you are successful, whatever you tell people, they will listen to you because your word of credibility. That is why people listen to these movie stars. That is why people listen to Bill Gates because Bill Gates is successful. That is why people listen to Usain Bolt. That is why people buy Puma clothes and, and shoes, but Bolt does not. They pay Bolt to wear it because Bolt is successful. When you have good success, people will listen to you. You can be anointed, but because you don't have success, you don't have good success, you don't have credibility, you can't, you, it, it becomes hard for you to win souls into the kingdom. For example, David was anointed to be king of Israel, but up to that point, nobody listened to David. It was when David killed Goliath, then David's influence started to rise in Israel. Nobody knew David. David was anointed by Samuel to be king. But David's influence began to rise when David kills Goliath. That is why God wants you to have success. God wants you to have good success. Because he made you. And when he made you, he made you in his own image. It's the same thing with, with Mercedes Benz. When Mercedes make a car, their logo is on it, their image is on it. So that car has to function well. That car has to function well because their reputation is at stake. And so God made you into his own image. He put his logo on you. He put his brand on you. And you, you are God's reputation. 
So when you are failing in life, God's reputation is at stake. <laughs> so God wants you to have good success. So you must be you must be specific in what you want, and God will direct your step. Now, a third one, you must you must solve problem. Be a problem solver. Write that down. Be a problem solver. You must be a problem solver. Anyone who solve problem, God will reward them. Anywhere there is a problem, there is opportunity. Anywhere there is problem, there is opportunity. Let me put this to you. The reason why we need doctors is because there are health problems. Imagine if there was no health problem, we would need doctors. The reason why we have pastors is because people, they are, people have sinned. Pastors deal with spiritual issues. If there were no spiritual issue, we would need pastors. If there wasn't a problem for people to move from one location to the next location, we would need transportation, we would need car, we would need boats, we would need ship. It's because there is a specific problem. Now watch this. God sent you to this earth to solve a specific problem. He sent you to earth to solve a specific problem. Probably the problem that you are sent to solve, you are angry about it right now. There's something in this world that you need to solve. And until you solve that problem, nobody will remember you. Write this down. There are two things that people re will remember you for. Only two things. One, the problem you create. And two, the problem you solve. No. Ask yourself this. Are you solving problem? Or are you creating problem? Ask yourself that. that that's a good thing. Which um the fourth one, fourth or fifth, I'm not even sure, is to show Anna. Show Anna. There's a level of authority in your life, whether it's, a, whether it's your mother, your father, or a mentor. You have to show authority, you have to honor the authority that is in your life. The purpose of authority is one, for protection. Whether it's your spiritual parents, your mother, or your father, you should show, you should show honor. The Bible says, whoever honors his parents will have long life. So you need to honor. Anna gives you protection. Anna gives you promotion. It's always somebody in higher authority that will promote you. It's always somebody in higher, in higher places that will protect you. So Anna gives you protection. Anna gives you promotion. And the third one is that Anna gives you provision to fulfill the vision that you have in life. So you need to honor people. Now, if you put that everything into perspective and you focus on what you and, and why you were sent to earth, the purpose that you were sent to earth to fulfill, you can't fulfill that purpose unless you are focused. I'm, I'm tying up everything into one now. You can't fulfill. Too many people have perished, have not fulfilled their, 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 their vision, their purpose, maximize their potential because of broken focus. I know we have phones now, social media take, take away so many things from us. Imagine you, are, you spend one hour every single day and maximizing your, your purpose. Forget about, um, forget about instant success. There is no such thing as instant success. Remove social media from you because social media is not success. Social media is not true success. By the way, write down what, what, what good success is. Write down what good success is. I'm giving you what good success is. The one that God speaks about, good success, because he wants you to have good success. The first one about good success is that you must find your purpose in life. 
you must find your purpose in life. Second thing about good, um, good, good success is that you must maximize your potential. Maximize your potential. The graveyard is filled with unfinished men. There are too many things in the graveyard that we, are, that we will never see in life. People die with books that we will never read. People die with invention that we will never use. People die with song that we will never sing. People die with businesses that we will never do transaction with. There are too many things in the graveyard that people die with. They never maximize their potential. Now, let me tell you something about life. You cannot run from yourself. You will have to wake up with yourself every single morning and look into the mirror. And you know when you are not doing what you are supposed to do, what you were created to, to do, because you will never feel fulfilled until you have, full, until you have discovered your purpose and maximize your potential. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit and still be unfulfilled. That is why it is important for you to discover your purpose and maximize your potential. So that when time, when time it is ready, when you are ready, when you take your last breath, when the creator recalls you back to his home, to heaven, that when they are laying you down, there's no more dream inside of you. There's no more vision inside of you. That every single thing that you were sent to earth to do, you, 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 you do it. You maximize that potential. You build that business. You write that book. You, you sing that song. You start that ministry. You do every single thing inside of you. And then you die like Apostle Paul who say it is finished. He said, I've been poured out like an empty drink offering. There's nothing more. There was no more. If, there was no more books in Apostle Paul to write. Apostle Paul almost write half the New, the New Testament. There are probably more. There was nothing more. He said, Timothy, I've been poured out like an empty drink offering. You should die like Jesus at the age. Jesus died at the age of 33 and a half years old. And he said, it is finished. There was nothing more in Jesus left to do. He finishes, he fulfills his purpose. He maximizes his life at 33. He died empty. I died like Moses who said, I've seen the promised land. These men die empty. There was no more vision inside of it. I'm wondering what you are carrying now today. I wonder what inside of you. The last one about true success is that you must leave a legacy for the next generation. You must leave a legacy for the next generation. David said something profound. David said that a good man leave an inheritance for his children, children, not his children, but the second generation. I wonder what legacy you will leave on earth. And the reason why David said that a good man leave an inheritance for his children, children, I figure it out. Because if when you die, you leave nothing for the next generation, you are a generational you being. If when you take your last breath, you leave nothing for the next generation, you are a generational thief because you have come into this world and you have seen people build things that you use, but you never leave anything for the next generation for humanity. And if when you die, you leave nothing for the next generation, you are perpetuating poverty. And my friend, perpetuating poverty is evil. So that is good success. That is what God wants you to have so that you may win souls for his kingdom, so that you may impact the next generation. Good success, fulfilling your purpose, maximizing your potential, and leaving a legacy for the next generation. But in order for you to get to that future that God has won for you, you must be focused. You must know your call. You must get on the road to purpose. You are not here to pay bills and that. You are not here to pay to play church. Church is where you go to download God's 
God's information so that you can maximize your potential and draw people into the kingdom of God through good success. You can influence the world for God's kingdom. That is what God wants you to do. So that hurt of the culture of heaven right here. That is what God wants you to do. That is why you have the Bible for you. So that you can live effectively. Not, not, not to be frustrated, but to live a life of purpose. To die empty. And so that when he see you, he can say to you, my friend, well done. Well done, my faithful servant. Well done. I'm about to wrap up now. For some of you who have, who have been um, in similar situation to, to, to where I started, my wife and I today, we, my wife and I, we, we, we were in um, Florida in, in March. Was it March? Yeah, we were in Florida in March for the, for the, Caribbean, for the Caribbean Leadership Summit. That's our conference that we took over see. This is, this is the same Rosie Lego beast that is talking to you. This week, we were consulting to executive um, leaders. These are people who own large organizations in Jamaica. We were consulting them. That is why you see this big banner right here, because we set up this room like a little studio to, 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 to consult them, to come online. And, and these guys, they want, this is Rosie Lego beast who used to sleep with rats and roach. With, 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 with rats crawling all over. This is us giving advice to those people. This is the same Rosie Lego beast who, 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 who train government leaders. This is the same um, Rosie Lego beast who when we go overseas, people travel all the way from other state to come to listen to us. This is the same Rosie Lego beast, Rosie Bad Breed. This is the same person that grew up in a chicken coop. Now, if God can do that for Rosie Lego Beast, imagine what he can do for you right there, right now, wherever you are. That you are not a biological mistake. That God has called you to do, to do something great. And he wants to pull that outside of you. I have done many things, but I don't want to talk, talk about them because I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to impact you. I'm not here. The governor general last year, he called my wife and I to, to, to give us an award for youth leader in excellence, for leadership. Rosie, Rosie Lego Beast. Rosie Badbreed, who grew up in the, in, the, in the chicken coop. So if God can do that for me, imagine what he can do for you. Imagine. And that is, that is just a start. So greater, great things is inside of you. And guess what? God love to take up the rejects and brush it off and put it to the world and show, and show the world that this is God. So when people look at me, they know that it, it must be God that's work, working in Rosie Lego Beast because there's no way Shamar should be doing what he's doing. That must be God right here. They say, if you see a turtle on top of a, of a fridge, somebody must put the turtle on top of that fridge. And guess what, guys? I am that turtle. Somebody must have put me on top of that fridge. And it must be God. So if God can do that for me, he can do that for you, wherever you are. If you are in a boat house, just like me, and food stamp with rats and roach, don't be ashamed. I used to be ashamed of that, but don't be ashamed. If you have a financial problem now, don't be ashamed. Probably you'll get pregnant in, in, at when you were a teen. Don't be ashamed because God can work human error into his, into his purpose. That is what God is for. He, he factor human error into his purpose. Even if you're a mistake, even if you are here and your parents tell you that she was probably raped, you don't know your father, that work, that mistake into his purpose. That means you were here. Even if you were born out of wedlock, God have a purpose, purpose for you. Whether you were born in wedlock, on top of the lock, behind the lock, no lock, 
God still has a purpose for you. Whatever it is that you are going through, he has a purpose for you. Guess what? You can open the mic now. <laughs> I've been talking a long time. <laughs> you can open the mic. You can ask questions and say whatever you want. And turn on your mic. We are, and turn on your video. Wherever you are, remember, this is those Lego Beast. So if you're in a, in a little board house, you know, just turn on whatever. I want to see some face. Go ahead, Anthony. All right, all right. I, 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 I must say I have listened. I've sat here and I've listened. I'm, I'm, um, and I'm impacted by what you are saying. But also, I know persons here are also listening. And um, any question you have, you know, I, I will ask you to just indicate, you know, by just raising your hands, and I will unmute them. You can unmute the mic, and you can post your questions, because I'm sure there are some of us that um, might have been in a similar position. You know, we. Uh, you know, we, 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 we were in a position where we were at the back and we may want tips on how, what, 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 what sort of step, steps, you know, that we can take. You know, I, I'm sure they are present with questions. So if you don't mind unmuting your mics, no one just asks a question. Just raise your hands one at a time because, you know, too many of us can't talk at once and on and, 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 and the Zoom. I see somebody type here, um, this person is friendly Zoom. I think this is our pastor. So he says that God is able to change the worst of us. Oh, praise God. Yeah. So I guess that's from your testimony, you know, that God is can change the worst of us. You know, you know, the worst. Indeed. The you know, Indeed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Go ahead, Anthony. No, go, go ahead. Yeah, as a, as a, um, no, no matter where no matter where you are right now in life. The mere fact that you are breathing is the mere fact that God has you, you still have purpose and life to be in you still have purpose to be full to um to fulfill and God wants you to fulfill that purpose so that you can impact the world and that you can win souls for his kingdom. And guess what? God loves to work with rejects because your disadvantage becomes God advantage. Let me repeat that again. Your disadvantage become God's advantage. Disadvantage, the disadvantage of David becomes David's advantage and the advantage of Goliath becomes his disadvantage. So God loves work with people who have disadvantage to turn their disadvantage into advantage. So despite where you are today, probably you can't read or anything. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I tell you, I miss a lot of school, even today that my wife say, um, when, my, when, I, when I'm away and speaking, my wife sometimes have to translate because they say, my accent is so deep. My accent, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they say, my accent is so deep and sometimes the English is broken. But you know what? I said that I, I can't even speak to some of these people because they're not going to understand what I'm saying, you know? And he gave me the same answer that he gave to Moses. I mean, but Despite your insecurity, despite what you are going through, God wants you to just fulfill your purpose despite whatever it is. And you know, you said something that um, I think it, it, it drove home to me when you spoke about the direction. You have to have a plan in order to know where you are going. Because I remember reading this thing once that the ancestor of every action, you know, is a thought. You know, you have to yeah. think it, you have to visualize it, you know, before you move. You know, and, and even, even when you were talking about the, the, the three steps to, 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 to success, you know, it emphasizes on having a plan. But one yeah. of the things that, um, especially, especially we, and I would say we as young people, you know, we, we, we are easily sidetracked because yeah. there are a lot of other things that, especially in the social media era, we are, there are a lot of things that can, you know, get us, get us off and get us sidetracked and all of that. But you have given us some ammunition. You have given us some ammunition that we can use as, as, as a tool, you know, to, 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 to fight, you know, that we can put up to help us to stay focused, you know, yeah. that we can accomplish some of these dreams and things that we have. Yeah, most definitely. I think you mentioned a good point, um, um, Anthony, is that you have to have a plan. Um, 
in, in the book of Proverbs, um, Solomon said that in his heart, a man makes his plan. That means the planning is for you. The planning is for you. And that God will direct his step. No, I, 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 I like it to, to GPS. No, if you are if you if you want to, to go somewhere and you did not put and you did not put a direction into the GPS, the GPS cannot direct your your, your step. No, you have to give God a, 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 a plan for God to direct yourself. No, once you give God that plan, just like the GPS, if you are going to Ochi and, you're, and you get off route, the GPS will reroute you because the GPS is directing your plan. Right. No, it's the same thing with God. If you submit a plan, if you make a plan and you commit it to God, if that plan is not from God, then God will always reroute you just like a GPS. And guess what? You must have a plan. The most, if write this down, you can write this down now, you can write it down, you can quote it, you can tweet it. Planning is the highest act of faith. Let me write, let me repeat that. Planning is the highest act of faith. Watch this. If if you go to the airport right now, no, no, no airplane can leave, can leave the airport without a flight plan. Let me let me repeat that again. No plane can leave the, the airport without a flight plan. The pilot must uh, must um, do a flight plan and then he submit that flight plan to the control tower. It's the same thing with us. No, once an aircraft is in the sky, the control tower the control tower will tell you that at any given time, um, that there are five thousand aircraft in the sky. Listen to me carefully. There are 5,000 aircraft or more in the sky when an airplane takes off from the airport. Watch this. But the pilot cannot see or have any idea where those other 5,000 planes are. It's only the control tower can see the complete thing. So if the control tower said to the pilot, go, go 28,000 feet, the pilot have to adhere to the control tower. No, the pilot does not know um, why, the, why the control tower is telling him to go higher or go lower. But watch this. The pilot cannot see the other plane. Even if the, even if the pilot switches his, his microphone or his radio, he can tune in to other pilot. And probably if the control tower say go, go 26,000 feet, you probably hear an expert um, pilot and his radio say, at 26,000 feet, there is turbulence. But guess what? He cannot listen to the other pilot because he's getting instruction from a higher authority. The, the control tower say goes 26,000 feet. Probably, the, probably the, 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 the control tower is seeing something that the pilot cannot see. And it's the same thing with us. If God say go a bit higher. So when we submit our, our plan to God, God becomes a control tower. He can see the entire scope in life. You can't see it. There are some areas in your life that you are blind spot, but God can see every single thing. It's the same thing with the control tower. The control tower can see every single thing. The pilot cannot see every single thing. And that is why the, the pilot must submit a flight plan to the control tower. Now, if you are going to the bank, watch this. If you are going to the bank to get a, a business loan or to build a house, you cannot go to the bank without a business plan. You cannot go to the to the bank without a blueprint. Now, if banks need a plan, if when you are going to play a football match, you need a, 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 a game plan, why is it that you don't have a plan for your life? If you don't have a plan for your life, you are planning to fail. If you don't have a plan for your life, you are planning to fail. God is not going to come down here to, to plan for you. You have to plan. God will never leave the throne of heaven to come down here to brush your teeth. You must brush your teeth. God will never yes. come down here and plant a seed for you. You have to plant that seed and left the rest in God's hand. You must do what you can do and left what you cannot do in the hands. Okay. Let's see this. Um, because... I, I remember once, as you said that about planning, you know, I remember once you you mm -hmm. you were talking to us and 
you were establishing the fact that the earth, the earth itself was built on some particular principles. Yeah. You know, there are principles that were established yeah. on the earth. And there are some things I understand yeah. that we will have to do. That God yeah, himself exactly. won't come down and do it for us. And it, it, yeah. it, it, it doesn't matter how much, how much, how much prayer we pray, how much we speak exactly. in tongues, how much we we no matter what we have, if we don't put some things, have a plan, put some things in place, and then get up and work at them, our 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 goals and our our, our things will never become a reality. Exactly. Um, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because when God created Earth, when God created the world, what God did, he, he put principles and laws into Earth, into the world to govern, to govern the Earth, and He governed the law. For example. The principle of gravity, watch this. The principle of gravity. No matter how many Bible scripture you know, no matter how, much, how filled you are with the Holy Spirit, watch this. God put gravity in place. It's a principle to keep the earth and its orbit, to keep things on earth. If you go on top of a building right now, I guarantee you, no, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how Fill with the Holy Spirit, you are no matter how many scripture you know. If you jump off that building, you are going down. Gravity does not care, it is a principle, it is a law. And God designed that if you want to fly, you have to step into a higher principle by the name of aerodynamics. That, that is all plane fly. Plane fly by a simple law they call the law of aerodynamics. Now, when the plane is flying, it is violating gravity. No matter what the cause of, that makes a plane crash, it is always gravity. Gravity makes a plane crash. Gravity takes something from out of the sky. So God put gravity in place. The other day I was questioning God. I said, God, how comes the wicked, watch this, how comes the wicked as all of the wealth? He said, the, the, he said the wealth of the wicked is to is for the righteous. Why is it that the righteous does not have it? Well, and there's a simple thing in the Bible. He said, if you are faithful with little, watch this, whoever is faithful with little will be given more. It simply means that the, 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 the unrighteous, they, are, they know how to manage. They know how to manage. And so they are, they are blessed with more. More will be given to those who have more. And even what you don't have, if you have little, it will be taken away and given to those who have more. So if you want more, you have to be able to effectively manage well at where you are. It is a principle of life. Sowing and reaping is a principle. Even, even, even if you don't believe in God, if you sow a seed right now in fertile ground, that seed will grow. That seed does not care if you believe in God or not. It's a principle. God put that in law. That means the wicked can eat mango just like you. Because if the wicked right now takes up a mango seed and plant it in fertile soil, the, the, the soil will give you a mango tree because the mango, the, the, the tree is in the mango. So the wicked is using that principle. And no matter how much you pray, if you're not applying that, that principle, you will never get the benefit of God because God designed the world, the earth, to operate in principle. Principle simple means first law. And once you have identified God's, God's, for, um, God's principle and apply it in your life, you will be successful. That is why you can see unrighteous people. They are successful because they are using God's laws. They are using God's principle. This, the fact is many, many times that we are in church, we are not using God's principle. We are not using God's law. We become religious or we become over spiritualized, and, and, and then we, we are in some predicament and we say, But where is God? And God is saying, No, I give you a principle. He said, Give and it shall be given. That is not just money alone. If you give your whatever you give yourself to, it will give back to you. For example, you say, Bold, give himself to track and feel. And so track and feel, give back to you, saying, Bold, what is it that you are giving to in your life? If you are a singer, are you giving yourself to singing? If you are a chef, are you giving yourself to chef, to learn, to become better? What is it that you are called for? Because if you give yourself to that, then it will give back to you. And so you must identify God's principle, as I said, 
if you I, I said if you know God's principle, God principle work, whatever whether you are righteous or unrighteous, God principle work. Gravity does not care if you believe in God or not. Once you jump off a building, gravity is going to work. Yes, 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 you are so right. I, I, I remember the I remember the first time I heard that quote, you know, gravity will work. Gravity will work. Um I'm not seeing where persons are, are, are commenting or texting. Um, I know I have some some very um shy way persons, but I, I, I know persons have been listening and um mm -hmm. um they are they are learning a lot. Mm -hmm. So I do hope that a lot is being deposited in you tonight as you come. I know you might be a bit shy to unmute your mic and say something, but you know. Desi? Oh. Okay, go ahead, Anik. Oh, somebody asked me. Yes, you know that I wanted a, a, another confirmation of God, you know. You know, the I don't remember it was when that you you preach, you know. It was, I think it was a Sunday. And it was a Saturday when I said to you, I said, you know, you know, so I know you have a word in a day, um, in a day, you know? And you mm -hmm. came, you delivered a word Sunday, and now, just now, the man of God, you know, it, it's confirmation. It takes three to confirm something, really, for me, you know? you know? And so, thank you, man of God. Yeah, thank you. I, I see somebody asking a question on Facebook. They say, oh, uh, Oh, as oh, as being marriage impact your success? It is, is it more advantage? Um, advantage, yeah. So somebody is asking me um a question on Facebook. It related to he said, oh, as marriage impact me? Um, for me, yes, because um, before I got married, there was no mind food. There was nothing. But the moment I married to my wife, who become a destiny helper. Um, things just begin to flourish. So in my perspective, in my own life, marriage has, 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 um, has propelled me forward. For some, it can be the, the other way if, if you marry the, the, the wrong person. But if you marry the right person, use God principle and marry the right person, then marriage will propel you forward. Because guess what? Two is better than one. That's a principle in life. Two is better than one. And so when you are married and both of you agree and you pray and anything, Jesus said, if two of you agree on anything on earth, let me say it again. Jesus said, if two or more of you agree on earth, then it will be done. And so that is a principle. When my wife and I married, we ensure that we agreed on most things. You're not going to agree on everything because you are two different individuals. But you must agree on your purpose, vision, and you the, the entire family must be heading in the same direction. So yes, it has it has given me a lot of um advantage and, and support me, for example, two income is better than one. <laughs> <laughs> so that so so it propelled me have a lot of advantage when you marry. Now for some people it can be a disadvantage. And I pray that you marry the right person. And when you marry too, you apply principle in your life. You apply principle in that. Let me say something before uh, Anthony. The thing is with principle, watch this. The thing with principle is that when you make a decision in your life, and you probably can write this down, when you make a decision in your life, any decision at all, you have two things about decision. One, every single decision gives you a, a what you call a consequence. The first one, you can either get a positive consequence or a negative consequence. For example, if you are at the stoplight and you decide to, to run the stoplight, you can have a negative consequence. Somebody can slam it in you and probably you lose your life. But if you stay at the stoplight and wait until it's your turn to move, then that is a positive consequence. No, when you apply God principle in your life, is that you are able to control the consequence of your decision. For example, if you are honest, what you are doing, you are controlling the consequence of your decision. No, if you are dishonest, mm -hmm. you, you are not controlling um, your, 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 your decision because something bad will happen to you if you are dishonest. So when God gives you principle, 
it is for you to apply principles so that you can control your consequence in life. Every single decision of a consequence. It, 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 your, your consequence can be delayed. For example, when God said to Adam and Eve, the, the day you eat this, eat from this tree, you will surely die. Adam and Eve died that day. They died a spiritual death. But what happened is that they died a physical death 900 years after. So if you are eating pork chops every single day, watch this. If you are eating pork chops every single day and you are not exercising, what is happening is that cholesterol is going into your bloodstream and eventually over a period of time, it will block up your arteries and you probably, for God forbid, you have a heart attack. So eating pork chops every day without exercising, you are, you are, you are having a negative consequence, but the consequence is that it does not show up immediately. There are some things that you are doing now that will not show up immediately. What will happen is it will compound over a period of time and give you a result because all of our decisions compound. And the last thing before I, I turn over to Anton is that when you, when you are born, you look like your parents, but when you die, you will look like your decisions. Let me say that again. You can write it and you can tweet it. When you born, you will look like your parents. You will look like either one of your parents, either your mother, our father, but when you die, you will look like your decision. And that's a great way to take us out tonight. That's a great way to take us out tonight. All right. Um, when you born, you resemble, you know, your parents. Some relatives they say, yeah, they say if you have your grandmother, your grandfather, mm -hmm. but you resemble somebody. True. But when you yeah. die, you resemble the decisions that you make. Exactly. I call just tonight. Say, I encourage us tonight to stay focused. You know, use these tips and these guidelines, you know, to, to, to stay focused. I take them for myself and I will try my best. The Bible says that um, if you are just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, you deceive your own self. You know, so as we hear these these concepts and these 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 suggestions, let's put them into practice. Yes, especially for my young people who are part of this Zoom session. I know we also have persons over on Facebook. You know, thanks for joining us tonight. This is um, YPG, Young People's Ministry. Yes, so thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Brother Annie, if I know you opened us in prayer, um, I'm going to just ask you because um, I, I see where, where you are commenting a lot. So I'm just going to ask you, Brother Annie, if to just close us out. Close us out. Unmute your mic and, you know, open your video and close us out tonight in prayer. Thank you for joining with us tonight, guys. Thank you for joining us. Those on Facebook. God bless you for joining. God bless you for joining. Are you ready for me, Anif? Yes, I am, Desi. Yes, sir. Go ahead. God, we praise you. We lift up your name, Jesus. We exalt you. We magnify you. We thank you for your word, God, for your word is life. We thank you for such a powerful message, God. God, we thank you that learning as learning, learning has increased. We thank you, King of Kings and Lords of Lords, for everyone that is in this meeting. Lord, I pray that your peace that passeth all understanding will be upon us. Your peace that passeth all understanding, God, we will not just be heirs of the word, but will be doers of your word, God Almighty. And as your man, you use, as you speak through your man servant, and oh, we can be focused, God Almighty. Focus on the tasks ahead, God Almighty. Focus on our purpose. Focus on our calling. Focus on our ministry. I pray that God Almighty, within focusing God Almighty, you will be the center of our focus, God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that God will cover us underneath the water and the blood. I pray that God Almighty will seal our lives into your kingdom. I pray that God Almighty will cover us as we're about to go our separate ways, God Almighty, even though we're not together, but with this social media um, forum. I pray that God Almighty will touch us and anoint us, God Almighty, even now, God, someone 
will receive the presence of the Holy Ghost. I pray that spirit of the living God, you will fall afresh upon us, God, for we need you every hour, every minute and every second of the day. We need you, King Jesus. We need you, God. We pray that your love will be upon us. Your grace will be upon us, God Almighty. I pray that, God, you'll supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. I pray that, God Almighty, you'll seal our lives for your kingdom, our lives that is sealed and signed. And we thank you for such a word in the powerful name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I look to you and I tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right, once again, thank you, Brother Anif. Sir Jamal, I pray the blessing of God over your life. Thank you so much for sharing the positive in our lives. You know, I I, I, I don't care what the devil tried to trick you to tell about I can't proper English, man. You have, you have deposited in our spirit you have deposited in my life you know over the years you know and i thank you for what you are doing i pray that god will eternally bless you and he will open up doors for your avenues he will he, he, he will create an avenue that you, you you will excel and you will exceed you know beyond far above what you can even think or imagine you know i pray god blessing over your life and your family over nas you know tell nas i said hi you know, yes, bless you, Nasa. Sister, come into right, your yes. Zoom. <laughs> yes, bless you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, you know, you know, but thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing, Sir Jamal. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Blessings. Thank All you. All right, for thank the person, Jamal. Thank you.